welcome. Good morning. We pray and hope you're well. You saw that announcement uh, for Courageous Fathering. It starts next month, and we want to encourage as many men to do the course, so please see uh, or contact Rob Day for details. If you don't have his contact details, you can text me and let me know, and I'll pass them on. Once again, uh, it's certainly trying times at the moment, and if you are struggling in any way, please make contact with us in, in any way, and uh, whether it's to chat, pray, or some other needs, please let us know, and we can see what we can do. We need to pull together in this, and... Uh, find strength and love and support in one another and have lots of mental fortitude at the moment. So keep yourself in routine, keep yourself uh, looking up unto the author and finisher and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage that in us. Also too, I want to encourage uh, giving online. So I uh, just want to encourage the, where you can, if you can, just to encourage people to also give online to this house. Uh, particularly if you're part of this house or getting blessed by this house. So thank you for that. I'm going to get straight into it. I'm going to just get into prayer. So Father, right now we just thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're a God that sees and knows and hears. Nothing catches you unaware. And right now we commit not only this day, but we commit our times to you. We commit situations and circumstances to you. And right now we pray for this country and all over the world and we pray that also there would be a conviction that comes upon your people lord strength that comes upon your people endurance that comes upon your people wisdom that comes upon your people revelation lord grant revelation to your people and not only to your people but to all those in power and leadership at present lord that conviction wisdom and revelation would so prevail lord and you would intervene on our behalf. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Well, this morning's message is about standing firm. And I believe, you know, it's part of our preparation and we need to stand firm. And obviously the scripture is found in Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10 onwards. So if you could turn towards there and I'll start reading it. Stand firm. So here's Paul once again writing to the church of Ephesus. And he says in verse 10, Finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the schemes of the devil, the tactics of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the principal but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore and we need to stand firm in all that God has for us and all that he is, who we are in him. And he's given us tools, spiritual tools, so we are able to stand. And he says, having girded your waist with truth, having put on your breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. What a great passage uh, of scripture, especially for us at the moment in what we're facing being strong in the Lord, knowing we have sp a spiritual armor to stand against the enemy. Why? Because we don't fight physically, but spiritually against darkness. And there are times in our life where we have to make a stand in faith to draw the line 
to say this far and no more. We are in a battle and it's nothing new. We have to fight the good fight and we are soldiers in Christ. And 2 Corinthians 10.4 says this also. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God in pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. At the moment, this is needed. Anything that is trying to exalt itself above God, bring it into captivity. You know, God has given us everything that we need to fight the battle of life, to wage the good warfare. Because one of the analogies are that we are Christian soldiers. And our weapons aren't carnal and they're mighty in God in pulling down those strongholds and everything that would exalt itself above the knowledge of God. And we're to bring things into captivity, bind them. And the battle is here sometimes. And that's why the scripture says, put on that helmet of salvation. And the helmet protects your head. And we don't fight a physical battle anymore. You know, sometimes I think in, in some ways it might have been a little bit easier in the old covenant or the olden days where you knew your enemy and the enemy was in front of you and you'd pray for God to strengthen your hand and smite your enemy. But these days it's different. We have to prepare for the gospel of peace and it's in love and it's in our preaching. And so we fight a battle in the spiritual realm through praise, through prayer, knowing who we are in God, putting on that armor, as it says, the helmet of salvation, knowing you are saved, <laughs> knowing you belong to God, knowing that you are his righteousness, knowing you are his beloved, knowing he's given you authority that whatever you loose is loosed. Whatever you bind is bound. And everything that would exalt itself right now above the knowledge of who God is and what he says, bring it into captivity. And that's what we're to do right now. And that's why we can stay uh, calm. That's why we can still speak out of a place of rest and not be unshaken with the things that, start, that are happening all around us at the moment. And I want to say this. And who we exalt and worship and bend our knee to, we enthrone. And for us, that is God. And we render the praise, as I said, and the prayer. And we declare you are our God. And we declare his promises over us. We bend the knee to him and nobody else. Only to God. And see, if you start to crumble and you start to give in to anything else, you start to bend your knee. You start to cower to anything else, whether that's fear or whether the circumstances around you. That's why I said when you've done all, everything to stand, stand firm, knowing who God is, knowing who you are in Him, knowing you are victorious in Him. You know, we went for a walk with our granddaughter Shiloh the other day. And she starts to sing this song. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There is nothing my God cannot do for you. I don't have a singing voice, but you know the song. So we started singing this song with her. And you know what? Our attention shifted. But it wasn't until a little bit later that I really got it. See, that song in that moment shifted our attention and our focus and, st and we started to magnify God. And you know, when you start to magnify God and lift Him up, everything else becomes very small. And that song, even though it came out, it, it's this, out of the mouth of babes have I ordained praise. But see, God was speaking out of our little girl for us to shift our attention of who God is during these times. God is bigger than all that, than everything that's going on. And he's the true giant slayer. And we're facing some giants at the moment. And we need to be fully clothed and prepared to stand with the Lord firm in who he is 
and knowing who we belong to. You know, Paul tells Timothy to endure hardship as a good soldier and not get entangled with the things of the world. Let me tell you why. So we don't give the enemy any leverage. Because if he has leverage over us, he will use it. And we will, <laughs> and you'll bend your knee and you'll compromise. We will bend our knee and compromise in life. Right now is preparation time. And there is a great reset happening in the natural and the spiritual. And we have to prepare our hearts to seek the Lord, to stand firm with the Lord, stand firm in his promises, stand firm in his word. Because if we don't, we will fall. We will trip up, no matter who we are, no matter who, who we think we are. You know, do you remember when Jesus was tempted in Matthew 4, chapter 4? You know, and he was tempted not at, at a high time. He had fasted. And we can say he was at a, a weaker time, at a more vulnerable time, at a lower time, physically speaking. And some of us not right now might be facing certain things where we are a little bit lower, a little bit weaker, a little bit more vulnerable. And that's when the enemy came in. He didn't come at a high time. He came at that lower point. And he starts to say, and he starts to say if you're hungry, turn, the, turn these stones to, to, to bread. And what does Jesus reply? He replies to him, it, it's by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See, the enemy uses three areas, and that's what he used in, these ch in chapter Matthew 4. And they are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And this is not of the Father, as 1 John chapter 2 also tells us. See, the enemy keeps using these three areas. Why? Because they work. But we're to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, not to tempt the Lord, and him only shall we serve. So we don't bend our knee to anything else. We don't serve no other but God alone. We are not to love the world. If we do, we will fall into the traps of this world and the enemy because he has leverage. I keep saying leverage, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about this. See, if he has leverage, we will bend the knee to what is not of God. I want to say to us, let us not bend the knee to this world or the enemy. That's what we are told to stand firm. We are called to love God and one another. And at the moment, what I am seeing concerns me and i'll tell you why we need to be cautious and put things under scrutiny at the moment don't just read or hear something without doing your due diligence and don't let it divide us because at the moment the enemy is trying to divide his people don't allow the enemy to divide and conquer a house divided cannot stand we need to pursue the things of God, the things for, of peace, the things of love, the things that pertain to godliness, the things that pertain to everything that God has purchased for us at this time. Now, I'm also going to say something else that concerns me. And please don't misinterpret what I'm going to say. There are a lot of things that don't make sense at the moment. And I'm on guard as a watchman and as a shepherd, because that's what I'm supposed to do. But I also see this, how easy things change. And I want to explain something to you. Because of need and because of circumstances, and, and just hear me out here. Now, I want to say this, make this very clear. I addressed the vaccination to our, to our church early on, and I addressed concerning the opinions and all those things early on. I addressed all those things. Now, I want to say this. The vaccination is not the mark of the beast. I didn't want to talk about the vaccination, but I just want to say this. The vaccination is not the mark of the beast. Okay? 
But I do want to say this, and this is what concerns me. Because at the moment, because of need, and, and I know many people who out of their own free will didn't want to get vaccinated at this time. But because of need and jobs and everything else, they felt they had to. And here's my concern with this. Again, vaccination is between you and God. We need faith either way, as I've stated. But what concerns me is this. How easy that if later on, one time, I don't know when, down the track, if you were told that the only way you could buy or sell, the only way you could live, you had to get a certain mark. And I believe God will, will give us wisdom. God will let us know what is of God and what's not of God at the right time because he loves his people. But what I'm trying to say, how easy it's been because of people's needs and circumstances. And for us Christians, we know when that stage comes, we're not to get it, of course. The Bible's clear about Christians not getting the mark. I don't know exactly what it is or what it looks like, but God will reveal all things in due time. But for the people who don't know and don't know Jesus or don't know anything about that, because of their, what I'm trying to say is because of their need and circumstance, because of survival, they're willing to do whatever it takes to put food on the table. That concerns me and that breaks my heart. And I think we need to be in a position prepared not to bend the knee. And I think right now, for me, I see a different perspective to make adjustments in our life, to not get sucked into the vortex of the system of things. Please hear my heart in this. I'm trying to get us ready so that way we're not a slave to systems. We're not a slave to certain things. And I pray, as I said a few weeks back, that we get our house in order. You know, look at our finances. Look at what we're doing. Don't get indebted. That's what I mean about leverage. See, if the enemy has leverage, you'll be vulnerable and you'll bend your knee to whatever decisions. I hope you hear my heart in this, and that's a shepherd's heart. And don't read into it more than you need to. All I'm saying is this. Let us be wise and put things under scrutiny at the moment. You know, the Lord woke me up with Genesis 11 this morning. And Genesis chapter 11 is an interesting story. It talks about a group of people having one language and one speech. And they started to do something that they shouldn't have done because they had one language and one speech. And God had to intervene. At the moment, here's my concern. If the world starts to have one language and one speech on a narrative, it concerns me. That's not conspiracy. And you know what? I wasn't even going to go here. What I am saying is, at the moment, we need to so hear from God, be wise in everything we do, and listen, and don't be in a position where the enemy has leverage. This is part of my warning to us as well. You can take it however you want, and it, it's between you and God, but ask God as I ask God. So at the moment, I'm watching, I'm waiting, I'm praying, I'm doing all the things that I know to do. And I know this, God will always look out for his own. We know that the cares and concerns of this world choke the things of God. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain, John 12. When we die to self, we start to live. You see, the sting of death is removed in Christ. Because of the fear of death, man has been in bondage to it. See, because there's a fear of death, man is bondage, in bondage to it. 
And we are certainly seeing this fear at work at the moment. But not for you and I, not for Christians. Because He set us free and we have eternal life. Because He now dwells in us and where He is, we will be. Our times are in His hands and not one sparrow falls to the ground apart from His will. So we should not fear. How much more will He look after you and I? We have much more worth than many sparrows, as Jesus stated. Right now, people should be looking to us as their inspiration for hope and assurance to give an answer why we are not fearful, but trust in our mighty God who is always able to save. My God is so big and so mighty. There's nothing that he can't do. We need to stand firm as a church right now. We need to remember love. We need to remember hope. We need to remember faith. We need to remember who he is and who we are and who we belong to. We need to remember the end result, the end game is Jesus has already been victorious. And what has overcome the world? Our faith. Our faith stands out, stands out and separates us from anything else. That's why we can stand firm. Because everything Jesus for us, he purchased our victory almost 2,000 2, years ago. He purchased it for you and I. I want to read Psalm 2 before I close. I hope you enjoyed this message and I hope you walk away with confidence, but also wiser. And also lear learning to lean more into him and to seek the Lord during this time. So to prepare our hearts to seek him. The difference between a good king and an evil king in the Old Testament always starts with this way. That either a king did not seek the Lord with his heart or he did. And that made the difference. I want to read Psalm 2 in our closing. It says this. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. I love that. Right now, whatever the enemy's trying to do, or whatever man under the influence of the enemy is trying to do god is not caught unaware and he laughs and our position is in him therefore we can rejoice therefore we can take courage therefore we can take rest that god will have them in derision then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in, in his deep displeasure yet i have set my king on my holy hill of Zion, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I've begotten you. Yes, that's talking in reference of Jesus, but it's also who you and I are. We are sons and daughters of the living God. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. We have an inheritance in him. His promises are yes and amen. And his inheritance to us is also the nations at the ends of the earth for your possession you shall break them with a rod of iron you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel now therefore be wise O kings be instructed you judges of the earth serve the lord with fear and rejoice with trembling don't you love that kiss the son lest he be angry and i pray right now that many would kiss the lord jesus christ that they would give their hearts to him. They would bend to their knee to him alone. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And it says, And you kiss the Son lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. We are blessed because we put our trust in our God. Father, right now, I pray, Lord, 
Father God, whatever people need to hear out of this message, Lord. Father God, may you bring the revelation that's needed, the conviction that's needed. I pray, Father God, that you take us further and deeper into you. I pray that we, we, we know you in a, in a greater capacity, in a greater level, that we hear you so closely, that we know your voice as you tell us, Lord, that your sheep hear your voice. And I pray, Father God, that you encourage us and urge us on at the moment to keep fighting the good fight. That, Father God, we are to stand firm, that we put on the whole armor of God right now and we can walk in righteousness. We can walk in peace. We can walk knowing we are the carriers of the kingdom of God within us, the carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we have prepared our hearts and our minds to not only love you and to serve you, but, Father, that we shall not serve any other God, and only you shall we serve. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. We shall stand firm in who he is and his promises. And we ask above all else, Lord Jesus, that your will will be done on this earth and in our lives. So, Father, we thank you for this message. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you are doing what you have done and what you're going to do. And we thank you for the glorious victory we have as heirs of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Be encouraged. Be strengthened in his might. I pray that love would abound. I pray that grace would abound, hope would abound, and faith would fill your hearts this morning to rise above every circumstance, every fear knowing who you are in him. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.